Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that Tesla to $775 per share. We're gonna go over five spicy stocks in this video, so make sure you stay to the end because we also have a big earnings this week coming up as well. So at the end, we're gonna recap earnings and the companies that are reporting next week so you are prepared. First up, let's talk about Tesla though because they are the number one stock that people want me to talk about at $775 per share. I talk about them a lot on this channel and my analysis pretty much remains the same. Under $800 for long term, under $700 for midterm, and under $600 for short term, okay? The 52 week low, remember a lot of stocks are impending a 52 week low right now. And for Tesla, that's under $600 per share. They're already looking like they're bouncing here. There's a lot of stuff going on in the news with Elon Musk. Twitter, for example, the takeover of Twitter could positively or negatively hurt Tesla. So that could be a catalyst to watch out for in the coming weeks. We also talked about how Tesla is one of the only companies that's smashing their earnings, consistently going, growing their earnings in the next two years. They could be as high as a $10 EPS. They've grown um, just in the last four quarters from like $1.50 EPS all the way to like $3.50 EPS. Looking at what analysts have to say about Tesla, it's very tough to get a read because they're all over the place when it comes to Tesla and stocks that are like Tesla. We have some analysts have them as low as $67 per share, which is probably just an outlier, and some have them as high as $1,500 per share, which is a realistic number for the next one to two years in my opinion. The average analyst has them about $1,000 per share, which is extremely realistic. And if they hit that price point, that would be a 26% upside. You can even see where some of these analysts are coming from. We even have some from the Oppenheimer Group, a top 25 analyst, Colin, at $1,300 per share. In the next 12 months, that's where Colin has um, Tesla. We also have some other five-star analysts coming in at $1,200, $1,300 per share. Tesla is a very interesting company. You can't really compare it against other car companies because it's not just a car company. It's a software company, an AI company, an energy company, a robotics company. There's a lot behind Tesla other than just an auto manufacturer, even though that's what they're really cranking their numbers up at right now. Because think about it. They just released the Shanghai factory. The Berlin factory just opened. Both those are brand new factories. And the Tesla Giga, uh, the Texas Giga factory is a new factory as well. So they just got these three huge factories going and they're just finding out now how to really optimize this manufacturing process through their Giga factories. So the growth is gonna be crazy in the next five years, especially if they announce more Giga factories are opening throughout the world. So personally, I'm buying as close to $600 as possible, but the best thing that I'm doing right now is just dollar cost averaging in $20 a day in Tesla, no matter what price it is for long term. And I plan to hold um, most of my Tesla, probably 75% or more of my Tesla for three years or more. Okay, next up we have Ford Motors with 78 million in volume and they're up 10% on the day on Friday. They were as low as $12.30 on Thursday and they've been beaten down needless to say, you know, from all time highs, they're down around 50%. Okay, they were as high as $25 per share. They went on a massive rally up 90% from 2021 into 2022 there was a huge amount of hype around ford so it was bound to happen um obviously they're nothing like tesla their eps is only around 50 cents they're not nearly as profitable they're not growing as fast so here we have ford pulled up for example and here's the total revenue um right that one right there total revenue 2017 through 2021 and you can see that they only have three percent two percent growth and then they lose two percent lose 18 percent they're only up seven percent so the growth factor is not there at all um, for ford unless they make a change with their electric vehicles the net income has risen significantly you can see from 2017 they only had seven billion three billion and then they actually became unprofitable almost unprofitable in 2019, unprofitable in 2020, and then they had 17 billion in net income in 2021. 
All right, and that was probably with all the electric stuff they were going through. Um, they saw that they could turn a profit on some of their electric vehicles. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start doing more electric vehicle stuff in the future. So they're definitely one to keep an eye out for. Their balance sheet is also horrible as well. They almost have just as many liabilities or debts as they do for assets. They have an 81% ratio um, of liabilities to assets, which is not a good thing. So looking at a five-year chart, we see that we had some lower points or under $10 per share in the past for a long time. So in my opinion, if I can get forward under $10 per share, closer to that $9, $8 price range, I have some price alerts set there. I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be passing up the long-term holding position um, at that $8 or $9 range on forward. Okay, now the next one that everyone wanted me to talk about is Coinbase at $68 per share. They're up 16% just on Friday. However, they're down 53% uh, in the past month. And if we look at from the bottom of Coinbase, right at their bottom was like 41, they hit very briefly. They're up 75% just in like 24 to 48 hours of so $73 per share. So the question is, can Coinbase go back to like $100, $150, $200 per share? And the answers, the short answer is maybe. The long answer, however, is under $50 per share is where I prefer to buy Coinbase. I think under 60, under 55, under 50 is definitely the sweet spot. And that's where it's really going to, um, have the most growth at from there. Okay, now with that being said, I think Coinbase is also more of a long-term stock. So if you're looking for short-term results or short-term movements on Coinbase, it might not be the best stock. There could be some potential of it bouncing back or even bouncing down in the short term. However, I think that Coinbase can succeed in the next two years, three years. The whole investing space stock market in general, um, crypto market in general is going to be in a whole different space in the next two to three years. So I think if you're able to hold Coinbase stock for that time, especially under $50 per share, a lot could happen. There's a lot of risk, but there's also huge growth opportunities in Coinbase stock close to $50 per share. If we want to entertain what analysts have to say, the lowest analysts have them at $60 per share in the next 12 months. The, on on average, we have them at $180 per share in the next 12 months, which would be 160% growth or upside. So there is a lot of reward with Coinbase, especially if you hold for like a year or two or more, because there's that 100%, 200% growth potential with Coinbase. And these were all reiterated just four days ago. You can see a lot of five-star analysts coming in. Um, with an above $100 price target. Even for short-term investors, if they are able to buy at $50 per share or even $60 per share and sell at $100 per share, for example, that's around a 40% swing trade on Coinbase. Let's talk about another risky one that's similar to Coinbase, but it's the, you know, the stock market version of Coinbase, let's say. So we have them up 24% on Friday, However, if we look at the past three months, it hasn't been pretty, down 18% and even more from three month highs. However, from the IPO price is when it starts to get ugly because they IPO'd at $38 per share. Now they're down to $10 per share, okay? Now this one has been as low as $8 per share. So I think this is a risky one. It's probably the riskiest one on the list, probably even a little bit more risky than Coinbase. But again, this is going to be a long term one as well. You're going to want to hold this one for at least two to three years before you see any results. There's no guarantee that you'll see huge results, but there is some reward potential, especially if they go from $10 per share back to $30 per share, which is very, very achievable for something like Robinhood, especially if they turn around the company or someone like Goldman Sachs or Berkshire Hathaway comes in and swoops them up and acquires the company. At this point, it would be good to see someone come in the company, buy them out and turn them around. I think I would like to see that. We can see the stock price go even up to 15, even if it goes to $15 per share, it's a 50% increase. I don't think it'll go much, much lower. We already have a market cap of 9 billion on Robinhood. And if Robinhood makes some great growth over the next two years, this this could be a stock that five to 10 X's. Not saying that it will, but it definitely could happen. 
And if we look and see what the analysts have to say about Robinhood, on average, they have them right at $13.50 per share, which would be around a 30% upside, which is always okay. But if I'm investing in Robinhood, I don't want a 30% upside because of the risk. You know, I'm looking for like 100%, 200% upside on Robinhood when investing in them. Now, analysts haven't really been touching Robinhood too much. You can see a lot of these analysts have only reiterated these price targets like 15 days ago, 16 days ago. Some, this one, Devin Ryan, JPM Securities five-star analyst, has them at a 36% upside. His success rate is only 54%, which isn't half bad. So it's basically like a coin flip with Robinhood is the best way to put it, you know, Put your stop losses if you're going to get into something like Robinhood, especially if you're going to be using a lot of money. And if you're looking for 100% upside, for example, make sure you put your stop losses at at least 50 to 40% losses. Okay, and the last one that we'll talk about is VTI. It is an ETF and it's a safer one because we did talk about a lot of risky stocks in this video. I want to finish it off with a nice ETF that anyone and everyone should be investing in for the long term. We see VTI down 10% in the last three months, which is actually a huge movement for something like that stock price, uh, VTI, to be moving down to $200 per share. Okay, and from all-time highs, it's down like 17%, which still is in a bear market, so we want to really see it down 20 25% from highs. I personally even think that it could get as low as $175 per share. I have some price alerts set on VTI at $170, $5 per share. And a lot of people th don't think that we're in a bear market until VTI or SPY goes down to like those levels of $175, $165 per share. So right now I would just be cautious with VTI and SPY because I think those are ones that have more potential to go down. Even though they're at a 52 week low right now, I think they have potential to go even lower than that. Maybe like, a f not a five year low, but like I was saying, $175 per share on VTI. Definitely isn't out of the question, especially if you looked at any stock in the stock market the last four, uh, four months, $175 per share for VTI should be very realistic. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen and this is not financial advice, so do what you want at the end of the day, but if you want a reminder of what VTI is and what stocks would have to move the most, Apple is around 6% of VTI, so Apple has to make a big downward movement. Basically, if Apple and Microsoft make those big downward movements past 52-week lows and go lower than a 52-week low, that will trigger VTI to fall significantly. Um, Amazon is after that with 3%, Tesla 2%, Google has around 4%, um, Nvidia with 1.5%, Berkshire Hathaway with 1.3%. So you can see this makes up only 20, these 10 assets make up only 10, uh, 25% of the entire basket of this ETF. Okay, so if Google, Microsoft, and Apple fall and they start dipping, that will be a good time to start loading up on VTI. But just to be clear, I'm dollar cost averaging into VTI and SPY every single day, $20 a day for long term because I believe in all those stocks over the next five years will be a lot higher than they are today. Okay, and just to do a quick recap on earnings and then um, just an overview and then we'll dive a little bit deeper on the videos on Monday and Tuesday of the companies and what I think is going to happen. So starting off with Monday before open, we have Wix, we have a semiconductor company, we have Weber, and so it's not that too exciting before open. We also have MindMed, which could be interesting. After close, we have Sundial, which is definitely going to be interesting. That one's, in my opinion, either going to move up really big or down really big. But Tuesday is when it starts heating up a little bit. So before open, we'll have Walmart, Home Depot, C, and JD.com. Those are four huge companies. Okay, and then after close, we don't really have that much going on. And then Wednesday, we have Zim, Target, Lulz, TJ Maxx and not much we have a chinese company reporting other than that after the close we have cisco and bath and body works okay so it's not as interesting or exciting as some of the earnings last week but we still have some big names reporting earnings 
And on Friday, we have John Deere and Foot Locker, which are two huge brands as well for the stock market. So I hope you guys really appreciate that content. Smash a thumbs up if you want more videos like this and more lists just like this. Comment below which stocks you guys want to see next. Let me know if you want to get on the close friends list. Message me here on Instagram. Check out my success stories, success number five, success number four, and you can see what kind of success people have been having with this program. Thank you on giving 80% on Verizon calls. Okay, that call was also awesome on my position. I've been posting success stories on my story as well. So if you wanna be a part of it and become more advanced in the stock market, 2022 is definitely the year. If you haven't been too much in the stock market yet, now is definitely the time to start loading up on the right stocks. There's a lot of generational buying opportunities right now. Stocks that are down 70%, that could easily rally 300%, 400% in the coming months and coming years. So you make sure you want to make sure you're not sitting on your hands and you're participating because you have to play to win. And obviously having a mentor, someone you can talk about with stocks, send over your opinions, bounce your ideas off of. You know, a lot of people, family don't grow up with stocks, friends don't talk about the stock market or cryptocurrency. So if you need someone like that in your life, that's what I'm here for. Already thousands of students have signed up and had the success. So you are gonna be next. Send me your, your success stories once you make money with the program too, and let's all make money together. Share this video with a friend, drop a like, comment below, make sure you subscribe with post notifications on, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.